Should you sketch before painting a dog portrait? And how do you sketch and transfer that image onto the canvas so it turns out like this? Well, when you want to paint an accurate representation of a beloved dog, or you're hired to, like I am as a commissioned pet portrait artist, it's helpful to create a roadmap to anchor into instead of staring blindly at a blank canvas and wondering what step to take next with your paintbrush in hand. I'm sharing how to create a pet portrait sketch and how to transfer an image of a pet onto your canvas next. So why do you sketch before painting? Well, the outline you sketch on your canvas before you start painting is your roadmap. This becomes your guide for when you paint your first layer. And since the sketch is the starting point, if you're wondering, should I sketch before painting? The answer is a resounding yes, absolutely. It's your anchor and your starting point for your brilliant acrylic dog portrait painting and then any pet portrait. Of course, you have the option of how much you want to sketch before you start painting. You can simply do a basic outline of your pet so you know where on the canvas you'll be painting the portrait and loosely where the main features go. The eyes, the nose, the adorable mouth, the ears. Or you can do a more detailed sketch like I do. I like to help myself out. <laughs> So for example, I like to include the outline of the body and the face, the eyes and the nose. And I tend to even include where the darker and lighter tones go. I like to highlight with a few pencil lines if any strands of hair are caught inside the mouth of the dog. And any clues that otherwise help me out. So for example, if there's a color change or maybe this is a, there's a certain pattern in the fur over here on this end of the sketch. The level of sketching will vary depending on how much detail is shown in the reference photos I'm using for the commission. Sometimes you don't have very good reference photos and that's definitely a topic for another video. And other times you have amazing photos. But I know how valuable this roadmap is to me once I start painting a realistic dog portrait. Consider yourself warned. I personally find sketching out a new commission on a canvas to be intellectually exhausting. It's like solving a math problem. <laughs> so what I do is I break it up over several sessions, particularly if it's a larger uh, portrait of a dog, for example, and it's a commission and it's like a 18 by 18 or 24 by 24. So how do we transfer an image like this and turn it into this? You know, there are various different ways to create a sketch. I love using a grid on my canvas and the grid method has been used for centuries to create accurate perspective when painting. So if you think you're cheating by using a grid, think again, you're doing what the old masters did. If you're struggling with your sketch or want to learn how to paint a realistic dog portrait and then go on to paint any pet, my online course, How to Paint a Dog Portrait, will turn your creative desire to paint into a commissioned pet portrait painter in just a few weeks. It only opens once a year, and I'll add the link in the description below. Before you create your grid, you need to decide if you're sketching the same scale on both the canvas and the reference photo, or if you need the en to enlarge the photo onto the canvas when you're transferring the image. Huh? For example, this canvas of Tasha's pet portrait is a 12 by 12 size. And if the reference photo was of the same size, so a 12 by 12, it would be to scale, you know, of scale. But if your photo is a six by six, like this one, you need to enlarge this image when you're transferring it onto the canvas because they're not the same size and you're scaling up. Step one, I like to start with the same grid I always do on my canvas. It's a square one inch grid. So I'll mark out where each inch is horizontally at the top and bottom, then vertically on both sides. Then I draw the grid directly onto the canvas with a pencil. For ease, 
of following, I like to label my columns and rows the same way as I do on the reference photo. So I'll write one, two, three, etc. on the top and on the left side. Step two. Then I draw a grid on the reference photo that serves as the outline for the pet portrait. Now this was the main reference photo, but I always use several reference photos when I paint. But there's always one, like this one in this case, in Tatcha's case, that dictates the outline of the pet. And then I used several other photos to get the details of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc., and the fur patterns the delicious hues in there. Well, that all came from many different photos. But this is the outline I followed. You can print out the photo and draw a grid directly onto the photo. Or you can make a grid in Photoshop, for example, like I do, or by using an app. If the photo is of the same scale, so the same size as the canvas, I simply draw a one inch by inch grid the same as on my canvas. If the photo is smaller, let's say a six by six like this one, then I'll do a half inch grid instead where each half inch square corresponds to a one inch square on the canvas. Then you label the top and the left side the same way you did on the canvas. Step three, now it's time to transfer the image square inch by square inch or half inch starting with the outline and then the main features eyes nose mouth and then the rest of the dog i break down this step of sketching a dog portrait into several smaller manageable steps in my in the first module of my how to paint a dog portrait online course because it can get a bit overwhelming if you're doing a commissioned realistic memorial pet portrait for example where you need to capture not only all the details and you also need to capture the, the essence, the true character of the dog that they loved so much and treasure and will for generations to come. If you never used a grid before and would like to try it, practice with an easy composition. For example, like a simple landscape or a bowl of fruit. And that way you become familiar with the process before you add any nerves of getting it just right into the mix. Have you used a grid before? I would love to know. And how, how do you sketch out your dog portraits? Leave me a comment below. And subscribe if you wanna tap into three decades of painting experience. Hello, who wouldn't? Subscribe if you want more videos from the studio.